For millions of us last month, it seemed like winter just wouldn't end, but new government figures show March was actually the world's fourth hottest month ever recorded. The average temperature was 54.1 degrees. Meanwhile, new weather models predict a giant El Nino this year. It threatens to change weather patterns around the world, affecting billions of people. Time Magazine senior writer Brian Walsh covers energy and environmental issues. Good morning. Good morning. Why is this so dire, do you think, for this year? Well, they're looking at what an El Nino effect actually is, is when you see the equatorial waters of the Pacific warm significantly, half a degree Celsius, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot when you think about how big the Pacific is. Over the course of a number of months, that actually changes weather patterns around the world, has a number of effects that are different in different parts of the world, but generally result in a lot of warming, a lot of rain someplace, a lot of drought elsewhere, and really just can, can have a lot of impacts. And how warm are the waters? Half a degree Celsius, yeah, which is... I, I think and that hasn't happened in... That hasn't happened. I mean, it's been years, actually, since the last El Nino. The last really big one, the one that, about the size that we might have this year, was about 1998, which is also one of the warmest years on records as well. Well, I, I, the only foreign language I speak is Pig Latin. Mm -hmm. But I, I learned, <laughs> reading in your article, that El Nino stands for the boy. Is there anything good that comes with this? Uh, something's good. I mean, they've seen that we generally have fewer Atlantic hurricanes during El Nino years, so that's a good thing for the Caribbean and for the Gulf Coast as well. Uh, we can also see a lot more rainfall perhaps in a lot of the U.S., which is also good for places like California that have major droughts in Texas as well. And, and affecting, I guess, in Brazil, the coffee production, things like that. Exactly. It's not so good in South America and Central America where you tend to have really prolonged droughts, can really damage harvests. Uh, and that's one of the worst effects. And back in 1998, you know, you saw billions of dollars in damages from, the, from that El Nino. You could see a, a similar amount from uh, this one as well. Everybody always asks this. I mean, what does this, all of this have to do with climate change? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a separate phenomenon for climate change. I mean, there is some research that indicates that they may become more common El Ninos in a warmer future, but you can sort of think of this as sort of adding to the warming. So we may have a year where two, 2014 or 2015 could become perhaps the warmest year on record when you add the effect of El Nino to the warming that's already happening. And how warm is warm? When you say warm, what kind of temperature are you talking about? Well, it really depends on what you're talking about, but I mean, you know, it, it could be a few degrees. I mean, it's sort of averaged out over the entire planet, so it really could get extremes in different places, but, you know, it, compared to the way it used to be in the 20th century, it's going to be something that I think will be noticeable to most of us. Okay, let's hold it 90, please, Brian. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you this morning. We like Brian's suit, too. Yeah, we like it very much. <laughs> we like you, Brian.